Hello, and welcome to the Unmasking Evil podcast, where we talk about mentally disordered and psychopathic offenders with me as your host, Mackenzie Page. Now, I created this podcast to give some insight into a few infamous serial killers, which I've narrowed down to five that are commonly known across the globe. I chose these five for a specific reason because all they all have one thing in common. They are all mentally disordered, which of course most serial killers are. However, on today's episode, we are going to get a little bit deeper into the characteristics of what a diagnosed psychopath is, followed by some more information on borderline personality disorder, schizophrenia, and ASPD or antisocial personality disorder in connection to these killers. All right. Starting off strong with one that we all know thanks to the popular Netflix series Dahmer, we are exploring the case of Jeffrey Dahmer through the lens of borderline personality disorder. Now, if you don't know, Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the most notorious serial killers in American history. He is responsible for the murder and dismemberment of more than 15 young men and boys over the course of about 13 years. To understand Jeffrey Dahmer's mindset, we need to explore the concept of borderline personality disorder. BPD is a mental health condition characterized by unstable moods, behavior, and relationships. Individuals with BPD often struggle with a distorted sense of self, intense fear of abandonment, and difficulty regulating emotions. Dahmer has noted several traits consistent with this mental health condition, such as feelings of emptiness and loneliness, impulsivity, and intense unstable relationships. All right, and next up, a couple more notorious killers for you, Ted Bundy and Jack the Ripper. Let's dive in. Although two very different people, they share their knack for gruesome violence. Ted Bundy was responsible for the abduction, assault, and murder of numerous young women across several states in the U.S. Similarly, Jack the Ripper, although he was never officially identified and is believed to be deceased, he targeted female prostitutes who worked in London. Both killers preyed on young, vulnerable women. They also share in their psychopathic tendencies. They were highly manipulative and skilled at charming and deceiving these young women in which they had no empathy or remorse for, saying that these murders went unsolved for years. At its core, psychopathy is marked by a profound lack of empathy and remorse, as well as a tendency towards impulsivity and a disregard for societal norms. Individuals with psychopathic traits often exhibit superficial charm, manipulative behavior, and an unfathomable sense of self-worth. I think we can all agree that these two fit the description of a psychopath very well. As John Wayne Gacy or as the killer clown. Either way, he was an American serial killer who murdered at least 33 young men and boys in just six short years. His behavior and actions align closely with the diagnostic criteria for what we psychologists call ASPD, or Antisocial Personality Disorder. ASPD is a mental health condition characterized by pervasive pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others. Individuals with ASPD often display traits such as deceitfulness, impulsivity, aggressiveness, irresponsibility, and a lack of remorse for their actions. Gacy would often lure his victims to his home under false pretenses, then subject them to sexual assault, torture, and murder. These crimes were characterized by extreme violence and brutality. Gacy showed to be extremely irresponsible with a long history of sexual assault and child molestation. He had complete disregard for the law and anyone around him. And in the end, he showed no empathy to the families and complete denial for his actions, which serve as a huge reminder of the destructive potential that antisocial personality disorder has. His actions only begin to show the devastating impact that this disorder can have on individuals. And of course, I saved the best for last. Richard Ramirez, or the Night Stalker, which he's more commonly known as, with one of the scariest disorders a human can develop. Being schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a chronic and severe mental disorder that affects how a person thinks, feels, and behaves. Ramirez showed numerous positive symptoms of schizophrenia, such as hallucinations and delusions. He reported experiencing vivid hallucinations and hearing voices which he claimed instructed him to commit violent acts. These hallucinations likely contributed to his erratic and unpredictable behavior. These delusions 
also played a significant role in Ramirez's mindset. He harbored beliefs about his own power and invincibility, viewing himself as a demonic figure with the ability to evade, capture, and inflict harm. These delusions allowed him to detach from reality, which we see is common in patients with schizophrenia. An untreated illness such as schizophrenia can have a detrimental and devastating impact. By understanding the role of schizophrenia in Ramirez's descent into darkness, we gain valuable insights into the complexities of the human mind and the factors that contribute to criminal behavior. All right. Now that we've gone over quite a bit of information, I want to open this up to my dear friend, Marie, who has no psychological background to ask any questions she may have. And I'm so excited to be featured on your podcast. Mackenzie, thank you for having me. My first question is, is borderline personality disorder something that you are born with or is this something that is nurtured throughout childhood? Jeffrey Dahmer experienced a very unstable and hard childhood marked by feelings of isolation, little to no relationship with his parents, and a fascination with death and dismemberment. These early experiences likely contributed to the development of a personality disorder, among other things. How does this personality disorder turn turn into someone becoming a serial killer, or does everyone who is diagnosed with BPD become a serial killer? It's not to say that everyone who is diagnosed with BPD is going to be a serial killer, but in Dahmer's case, his attempts to alleviate these feelings through substance abuse, necrophilia, and ultimately murder reflect the desperate search for identity and connection often seen in individuals with borderline personality disorder. Between antisocial personality disorder and borderline personality disorder. Although these mental health disorders are relatively similar, there are a couple distinct differences. People with antisocial personality disorder are typically manipulative, deceitful, and reckless, and don't care about other people's feelings, whereas people with borderline personality disorder have symptoms which include emotional instability, feelings of worthlessness, insecurity, impulsivity, and impaired social relationships. Does everyone who has uh, schizophrenia become violent? (laughs) recognize that the vast majority of individuals with schizophrenia are not violent and do not commit crimes. Research consistently shows that most people diagnosed with schizophrenia are more likely to become victims of violence rather than perpetrators. However, it's also true that some individuals with untreated or poorly managed schizophrenia may have an increased risk of violent, <laughs> risk of violent behavior, including homicide when compared to the general population. Is there a high rate of suicide in patients diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder since they have such intense feelings of loneliness? It's important to note that while individuals with antisocial personality disorder may experience feelings of loneliness and social isolation, not all will experience suicidal ideation or engage in suicidal behavior. Suicide is a complex phenomenon influenced by a multitude of factors, including biological, psychological, social, and environmental factors. Thanks so much. Thanks for answering all my questions. Thank you for coming on um, our podcast, Marie. And that is it for this episode of Unmasking Evil. Join us next time as we continue our exploration of the minds of history's most notorious criminals. Everyone stay safe and thanks for listening.